Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Middays with Trey, your weekly afternoon break. I'm your host, Trey. Let's get right into the show. Today's guest has worked as a director, performer, choreographer, and teacher on stages all across the country, and now has brought his talents right here to Coastal Carolina University as a department chair for the theater department. Let's give a huge round of applause to Steven Higginbotham. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me here, Trey. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so we just really kind of wanted to bring you to the show. Um, you know, being a new department chair, I really wanted to get to know you, let the, let the audience get to know you, faculty, staff, students get to know you. And so we'll start from the beginning. How did you get into theater? You know, growing up, I grew up in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And on my street, on my block growing up, there were 40 kids my age, right within a couple of <laughs> years. And so it was just amazing. You always had had student had uh, other student other other kids to play games with or play basketball, play sports with. Yeah. And every year we had a block party, and part of the block party was that the parents in the neighborhood would choreograph or stage little little uh, you know entertainment pieces <laughs> for the other people on the block. Yeah. And so we would do small production numbers and songs and things all together. I guess that would be my first kind of experience in performing. Um, you know, when I was in school, I was always in choir mm -hmm. and then was in my first theater production when I was in high school. Wow. Um, so, so that was maybe my start yeah. from there. <laughs> um, after that, you know, I went on to uh, study theater mm -hmm. at uh, the University of Arizona and I got my graduate degree at Florida State University. Mm -hmm. I worked professionally as an actor, as a director. Um, and was really excited in order to kind of sculpt my career towards becoming a professor so I could share that knowledge that I learned yeah. uh, with, with future students and work with them to create just new, great productions in the theater. Wow, so. okay. So as a performer, like, you know, during your performing days, what was your favorite uh, maybe production that you were uh, able to act in? Wow. Uh, favorite production that I worked in. I've had the opportunity to work in a lot. Yeah. And I always looked at it like um, I wanted to learn more about acting mm -hmm. so that I could be a better teacher and a better yeah. director, okay. you know. Um, but favorite roles, I would say I, I had the opportunity to, to play the role of Will Rogers mm -hmm. in the Will Rogers Follies more than once. Um, just uh, amazing person. Uh, you know, he, he uh, Will Rogers was a silent movie star. Mm. Um, he was a politician. He he wrote a newspaper column. He was in the Ziegfeld Follies in the 1920s. He was probably who everybody talked about every day. Okay. Um, and a show about his life. Um, amazing to have the opportunity to learn more about that person, mm -hmm. and how he lived his life, and then be able to portray him on stage. Okay. Um, I think that would be a highlight. I also loved playing Rooster in the musical Annie yeah. <laughs> because I never get to play the villain. Right, and so getting to play the villain in yeah. the show was really fun. Um, and then I think you you put in in my bio at one point that I did I did work on Sesame Street. Oh, so it's really fun to work on the happiest street in the world. So <laughs> uh, I did that for a couple of years too. That's very cool. So what do yeah. you prefer? Would you uh, you know if you had to choose, would you prefer acting or directing, or is it is it like are like two different worlds that you can't even compare to? Oh yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, I, I decided to get my graduate degree in directing. So mm -hmm. I, I studied at Florida State. And um, and I think I, I, I did that because, like I said, I always wanted to, to be, uh, you know, the best educator, the best director that I could be. Mm -hmm. And I looked at my experiences in acting as being able to know more about the professional process of being an actor. Right. Get more experience, get more real world experience so that I could bring that back to my studio, mm -hmm. to my students, uh, to the productions that I work on and the classes that I teach. So yeah. if I had to say a preference, I guess I would prefer directing yeah. over performing. Okay, and then, um, okay, so this is just a personal question. What is the difference between, in your opinion, what's the difference between Hollywood acting and, and theater acting like for on a live audience? Like, what would you say the difference is between those two fields? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> well, I would say, um, I, you know, I guess maybe the first thing is I would say ways that they're the same. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in both in both kind of mediums, you're a storyteller, mm -hmm. right? So you want to be clear about telling that story. You want right. to tell it with a sense of reverence and honesty. Mm -hmm. You want to excite and engage your audience. So in those ways, I think they fall into the same route. Okay. Um, or the same, it's the same kind of kind of style. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe I would talk, the big difference maybe is about the process, 
right? So um, in theater in theater acting or theater performing, mm -hmm. we're working so many hours in a rehearsal room in order to craft how we're telling that story, right? You make a lot of choices in the rehearsal room about who that character is, where they come from, how they're gonna say this line, when they're going to exit. You're making yeah. these, these distinct choices to tell that story on stage. And with the director, you're working to, to hone yeah. that over time and craft that over time very specifically so that when you get to the performance you've made a series of very specific choices mm -hmm. in telling that story alive and in the moment mm -hmm. right? right and um that live performance has to go on hopefully unhitched <laughs> right for two hours you know very specifically when you're working you know um, for screen acting mm -hmm. it's almost like somebody gets to be in that room with you in the rehearsal room with you filming every take filming every time you make a choice mm -hmm. right and so you walk in and you, just, you try a line one way and then you try it a different <laughs> way they're recording the whole time mm -hmm. and so they can edit together what those best choices are right right rather than having to having to craft it into one long line that's two hours long right so maybe it's about the process you know i find when um when I've worked on productions or, or things that have been filmed, mm -hmm. you know, most of my work has been on the stage. When I work at, at, on a film set, I feel like, oh my gosh, I get to do that again. Yeah. And you're going to film that. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Let's do it again. Let's yeah. keep doing, you know, <laughs> trying different different takes in, in order to make those choices. Okay. It's exciting that you get that opportunity <laughs> to, you know, do, it again, to yeah. do it again. Huh. <laughs> okay. And so you're the new department chair for the theater, part, yeah. you know, here at yes. Edwards College. What attracted you to Coastal? Coastal, you know, I think, um, well, you went to Coastal. I did, I graduated right? from here and now I work here. <laughs> exactly. So you can see that it is a, an attractive place, yeah. right? A place that has a lot going on. Um, I think that, and that was exciting to me. Mm -hmm. I could see that, you know, this department and this college mm -hmm. and this university really has a lot of exciting things happening at the core, mm -hmm. right? Um, when I met the faculty, I was really impressed by the things that they've accomplished in their careers, but also the way that they're, that they're situated to continue to create great work for mm -hmm. the theater and produce wonderful classes and learning experiences for the students here. Yeah. The way that they talk about their work is so exciting. You know, I've got to meet some of the students. They chose to come here out of many other places mm -hmm. because of the productions that they stage and the classes that they offer. Mm -hmm. And then the professional training that, that they're connected to, mm -hmm. you know, those opportunities then to leave Coastal and to go on to work on a major motion picture or to work, you know, on a, on a professional stage production. Yeah. Those things are really exciting to, to see all of that stuff that's already happening wow. here. I thought that was really, really attractive to me, just to see that I could be part of this awesome team that they have, yeah. and to help this help this area grow for the future. Right. So speaking of growth, that leads me to right into the next question. What what kind of vision or ideas do you have for you know the the, the next coming year or years for the theater department? That's a great question. <laughs> And I think that, you know, in the time ahead, I'm looking forward to working with the faculty and staff in the theater department and the students to craft that vision together. Um, but things that I could maybe talk about in terms of just a broader, yeah. broader vision mm -hmm. for, for the department is I would say, you know, our world continues to change at a very rapid rate, mm -hmm. right? We could see how much our world has changed just being impacted by COVID right. for the last few years yeah. and the ways that we've worked more digitally or virtually, mm -hmm. the way that has, that has affected the professional arts industry and the higher education sure. landscape, you know, has been has been huge. Um, the ways that in our country, we've also had social reckoning mm -hmm. and looking at our community and how we are, should be more inclusive, how we should celebrate diversity, mm -hmm. how to promote equity in, you know, in our communities, mm -hmm. both on campus and the places that we live. Mm -hmm. these, these are things that are happening in our world yeah. and they also happen in our classrooms right. and they yeah. also happen in the productions that we stage and they also happen when we're trying to you know, reach out to our community to be the storytellers that we are. So when I think about a vision, I think that we have to keep all of those things in mind right and think about how we can be of service to our community and our larger community by the stories that we tell the art that we produce the classes that we offer the productions that we stage and um i know we're going to do that as a team kind of in moving yep. forward well that's great thank you so much Stephen, for being on the show um you know this is a great opportunity i'm glad we got the chance to meet and, and for you to be on the show so thank you trey thank you so much for your time today thank you for this opportunity to meet 
people right <laughs> right um, here and and out there um, and I look forward to working with you in the time ahead I know that you do a lot for this college and thank so you. thank you for the work that you do yeah thank you Stephen Higginbotham everybody what a great guy Stephen uh, actually just learned this out he was actually Big Bird on a Sesame Street tour I think they either toured across the country across the world but yeah little known fact what a great guy and he played Big Bird All right, it's that time again. It is time for Hat of the Week. This week's Hat of the Week is this one. Now, I'll be honest, this really doesn't have a story. I just love this hat because it has a light on it. And I'm not really a jogger, but if I were to jog at midnight, I would be covered because of the light. It makes me look like a, a red minion, but that's okay. So this is the Hat of the Week. Let's call this the Power Hat. It is time for the weekly update. I'm gonna tell you some of the things that are going on in the Edwards College this week. Um, so starting September 7th at 4 p.m., the Department of History kicks off its Peace and Conflict Studies lecture and film series. In this session, the History Department Chair, Chris Gunn, will discuss ethnic violence in Central and Eastern Europe. Following that lecture, starting at 7.30 p.m., Sweet Sweet, a South Carolina-based indie folk duo will perform in the Edwards Recital Hall. On Monday, September 12th, starting at 7 p.m., Steinway artist Enrico Elisi will perform a solo piano recital. Finally, on Wednesday, September 14th, starting at 4 p.m., the Department of History continues its Peace and Conflict Studies lectures and film series with a screening of No Man's Land, a film that depicts soldiers from opposing sides caught between the lines who are now forced to encounter each other as human beings. A lot of good events are coming up this week, so make sure you guys stay tuned on the Edwards College social media pages so you can get all the updates. We didn't have time to talk about them all on the Today Show, but if you follow our social media pages, you will stay up to date. All right, that wraps up this week's episode of Middays with Trey. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. Same time, same place. Bye. <laughs>